In this lesson, we're gonna go through the process of deploying our app to the Google Play console, which is this platform for managing our apps within the Android ecosystem. And if you followed along when we distributed our app into the Apple App Store, this is gonna be similar in spirit. We should have the bubble documentation for going through this process close at hand, and I'll link to that in the description for this lesson, because it's gonna get a little bit bureaucratic, a little bit technical in places, but let's go through it together. So the first thing that you're gonna to want to do is create an account with Google Play Console. There is a link to it here within the documentation. And you're just gonna to want to go through here, add your details and create your account. So when you have a Google Play Console account, then you're just gonna to want to create your app. So with our app listing created inside of Google Play, our next step is to somehow send the build from Bubble to Google Play. In other words, to deploy our app from Bubble to Google Play. And in order to do this, we actually require an API key. We need to prove to Google Play that we have the right permissions to deploy this app into their infrastructure. And somewhat confusingly, this key actually comes from a separate Google service called Google Cloud. That is where we are going to generate the key that we provide to Bubble, which in turn is going to be used to authenticate with Google Play. In other words, to allow our deployments to Google Play to actually succeed. So your first step then is to create an account within the Google Cloud Console and also a project for your application. And we have a very detailed article in the Bubble Manual on how to do this, which I will link in the description for this video. Now, once you've created your project, we need to generate this API key, which you can do underneath credentials, and then you can create a credential, and we're looking for this service account. Or you can also find this area, if you hit this little navigation menu, and you go here under IAM and admin, service accounts and create here a new service account. So you can think of this service account as a special way that our Bubble app can log in to Google Play behind the scenes so that it can deploy our build to Google Play. So we wanna give it a name. It doesn't really matter what we put here. We can skip this permission step and also this last step here. You'll then see your Surface account here within the credentials section. Make sure to open it up. Come over to keys and create a new key. And we're gonna create here a JSON type of key. Now this key is gonna be downloaded to your computer. And what you wanna do now is go back into the Google Play console. I'm gonna go back to the homepage here and then find this users and permissions tab. And we are going to invite a new user here. Then if you go back into Google Cloud and come over to the details section of your service account, you've got this email here. We're going to copy that to our clipboard and we're gonna paste that into this invite user section in the Google Play console. And then you're gonna come down to account permissions and give the admin level permission here. And then we're simply going to invite this user. So what this has done now is it's created an account that Bubble can use in order to deploy our app to Google Play. But there's one other step that we need to do so Bubble can do these deploys automatically. And to find this, we're gonna go back into the Google Cloud Console and we're going to navigate to this API and services section, making sure that we're still within the same project. And we're gonna enable a new API here, which we can search for, and it is called the Google Play Android Developer API. We're gonna make sure to enable this. And then what should happen automatically if you go over to this credentials section is that that service account that you have created earlier should be listed here, which means that it has access to this API. Now, this next step is going to feel very technical to most of you. We're going to generate something called a key store, which you can read a little bit more about in the bubble manual here. It's basically a special type of security key that bubble is going to use when it generates our app build. 
And this is going to mean that Google Play and end users can trust that the app that they are installing is, in fact, our application. And to generate this key store, we're going to use a specific type of program. And it's not a program with a nice little interface here with a button that you can click. No, it is a program like this. This is the terminal on Mac. On Windows, this is called the command line. And this is actually what we're going to be using to generate this key store. And I don't want you to be too intimidated by this. I know that it might seem a little scary if you've never encountered the terminal before, but it's actually quite straightforward what we are going to be doing here. And the way that I want you to be thinking about this is that to generate this key store, we are going to run the equivalent of a bubble workflow. And in the terminal, these workflows we call commands. And the way that you trigger them is simply by typing the name of the workflow or the command and hitting enter. And what this is going to do is it's going to run the command. Now, you might be seeing something different to me if you're following along here. That's absolutely fine. We're going to get to that in a minute. I'm running this within the terminal on Mac, but you'll be wanting to do exactly the same thing if you are on Windows via the command line. And the only thing I want to show you right now is that if you get stuck for whatever reason, you don't really know what you're looking at, you can always just type in here clear, hit enter. That's a special type of command that's going to remove everything from this terminal window. Now, the bubble manual has all the information that we need for this. I just want you to take a look at the command that we're ultimately going to want to run here and see how it starts with key tool. And then it has all of this other information after it these hyphen, hyphen V, hyphen key, alg. You know, there's a whole bunch of different stuff here. All of these are simply parameters that we're passing to this command. In the same way as we pass parameters into a backend workflow, or even pass properties into a view within mobile, that's all that these are for this command. And we don't need to know what all of these are. We just need to copy and paste them into our terminal. The only problem is that you may not have this key tool command installed on your machine. And so if that's the case, there's a prerequisite step that we have to do first where we install this command. Now, this command is actually part of the Java programming language. And it's this programming language that we have to install on our computer. If you're on Windows, you can simply follow the link in the bubble manual to download Java to your computer. And if you are on Mac, we're going to install Java via a, another program called Homebrew. And the easiest way to install this is simply to click on this link here and then scroll down to you find this Homebrew PKJ file. So you wanna download this and then open that file to start the installation process for Homebrew. And once you've installed Homebrew, you can actually start the process now of installing Java, which you're going to do by following this link in the bubble documentation. And we're simply going to copy this command here. So this is a command that's going to run within the Homebrew program. And we're simply going to paste that command in and hit enter. And what this is going to do, if it's not already, is install Java, which is actually called here OpenJDK. And if it's already installed, then happy days. The terminal is simply going to tell you that it's already installed. So now we can just clear out our terminal again and come back to the bubble manual. We're going to copy this command. We're going to paste this into the terminal. And then just using our arrow keys and backspace, we're going to replace this last part here with an alias for this key store that we're creating. Just think of this as a specific label that we're going to create for this very specific type of key. So I'm just going to call mine the Wanderlog key store and then simply hit enter. The first thing you'll be asked is to choose a password for your key store. So make sure that you note this down somewhere. And note that as you type here, you're not actually going to see anything appear on the screen. That is for security purposes. But once you've typed, just hit enter. And then you'll simply be asked a bunch of questions. For each one, you're going to simply 
type and then hit enter. Now in the terminal, you can't use your mouse if you make a mistake. So you'll just have to use your backspace. And if you're unsure about what to put for any of these, just check the bubble manual here. Now, once you've gone through this process, your key store will actually be created as a file and it will be stored in the current working directory, which you can always find by typing in pwd or if this doesn't work on Windows, you can use this command as well. And this will tell you the directory in which this key store has just been saved. So you can open the equivalent directory on your computer and find the file. We highly recommend that you back up this key store file because without it, you will not be able to make continual updates to your app within the Google Play Store. Now, your next step is to go back into Bubble and go under Settings and Mobile Settings. And we're going to fill out all of this section here under Android Settings. Now, starting with this package name, this is a unique ID for your app within Google Play. And if you've set up an app within Apple's App Store Connect, you can reuse the bundle ID that you set up there. Now, your JSON key, this is the key that we created earlier from Google Cloud for our service account where we went into keys and we created a new JSON key. So you should have that on your computer and you can upload it here. Next, you've got your code signing key. So this is the key store that you just created. Then for your code signing key alias, this is the label that you gave to the key store within the terminal and the password that you gave for your key store within the terminal as well. Now for the deploy track, this actually corresponds to a setting within the Google Play console. And you can think of this like a high level grouping for where we want to distribute this build, either for internal testing with yourself or your team members, alpha testing, so very, very early stage testing potentially with some external contributors, beta testing, so you're opening up this testing group potentially to even more people and then production for when you're ready for this to be published out on the Google Play Store. So because this is our first Android deployment, I'm gonna set this to be internal and we can actually manage these groupings once we're in the Google Play console as well. And then for release status, we're actually just gonna set this to draft. This setting may change in the future, but please check the link in the description for this lesson for the latest on how these settings work. And then we can simply hit deploy making sure that we're deploying to both web and mobile, give an appropriate description, and then choose what type of build this is. Because this is our first Android version, this is going to be a new build type of thing. And because I've been generating some versions for Apple, I'm already here on version 0.4.0. We can consider this a minor release, within the context of our version zero. That's one way of looking at this. And so I'm going to hit deploy here. And now in the background, Bubble is generating our Android version. In our case, we also have our iOS version already set up. So that's why I'm seeing a message here about Apple as well. But at any rate, Bubble will notify us when this Android version is ready via email. So it's been about 30 to 45 minutes and I've received this email from Bubble telling me that my Android app build file has finished being generated. However, it hasn't been automatically sent to the Google Play console. And this is what happens. The very first time that you generate your Android app build file, the upload to the Google Play console will fail. So we're gonna go in there now and upload the build ourselves. Subsequent deploys for Android will be automatically added to the Google Play console. So all we have to do here is make sure that we download this file here. Then when we go inside of the Google Play console, we should see our app listed here on the home page. This is what's been generated by Bubble for us. Then we wanna come over here to test and release. 
And this is the section where we are going to make our app bundle, make this version that we've just created available to certain types of users. This production area is one that we're not gonna touch until we're ready to publish our app publicly on the Google Play Store. This testing area is what we are interested in now because before we're ready to publish, we should be going through a process of testing our application, both with ourselves and our team, and perhaps with some extended group of testers as well. Now, we've got a few different options here, and these all have a bit of a description here within the Google Play console as well. Most of us are gonna to want to start here with internal testing, which is going to let us provide access to this early version of our app, just to ourselves and our immediate team members. And we should have a little bit of a checklist of things that we want to do here, but what we wanna do is create a new release. And this is where we're actually going to upload that app bundle file that we were emailed from Bubble. And this is going to be uploaded and processed by Google Play. And once that is finished, then Google is going to fill out the release details here for us. And we can simply hit next and then save and publish. Now this has created what Google Play calls a release and it's tied to a particular build that we have deployed from Bubble. What now will happen is if we deploy more versions of our mobile application, these will be automatically added to our Google Play account where we can create a new release tied to that build file. And to show you this process, I'm just gonna go through the motion here of testing out this initial Android version. Now, from this testers section, we first have to add the individual testers who we're going to allow access to this particular release. So you can add here a list and then some email addresses. And then once you've added your testers, all you have to do is share with them a particular link here. Make sure that you save your changes as well. So if you share this link with a tester, they'll be able to accept the invite to test and they'll be able to click a link here to download the app from Google Play. Then they'll be able to click to install it and these testers will now be able to run the app and test its functionality. Now, it's worth noting that the next time you deploy your application and you do this as a new build, that once it is done, you won't have to manually upload the new build into your Google Play console but rather the build will be uploaded to the Google Play Console automatically. 